Hey guys, welcome back to Pokey's Models. Today we're going to be looking at uh, our next kit that we're going to be building, which is the SD KFZ 233 8RAD. And this is the version that has the 7.5 centimeter gun on it, which is the same gun that is used in the Stug 3. Now this is a 135th scale AFV club kit, kit number 35233. And I got this off of eBay. Uh, I don't know how long ago it's been in the stash for a little bit uh didn't catch it at first but uh one of the things that says over here uh photo etch parts of some storage bath of side storage baskets shading net support system and insulation net included well the insulation net is not in the box on this one so uh, when i got it the cellophane was off of it but all the parts were still in the bags <clears throat> that uh leads me into the next thing is this must have been stored in somebody's basement and I think that basement might have flooded at one time because all the plastic bags were well this had this gritty feeling to them and same way oxal just fell same way with the instruction sheet it's like it's just kind of gritty feeling and if you open up to the center of the instructions you can see the staples in it are are all rested that and some of the parts mostly the this one right here was the worst it looked like I had a black mold uh, growing on it so I gave took everything out of the bags and gave everything a wash and a dosh a dawn dish soap <clears throat> so we got that luckily the metal barrel that comes with it it was in this little bag and then it was stuffed inside of a, another parts bag. And part of our upper armor here, you see this over here is broke off inside the box. Luckily, I was able to find it, so that'd be an easy fix. Uh, decals look like they survived okay. Again, they was in the bag with the photo etch parts so they look good and the last thing I want to show here really quick is the rubber tires which I'm not a fan of uh, rubber tires I'd rather have a yeah, resin or something like that or just plastic but there is no seam line on these these are they did a really good job of making these that and they even say continental on them so be interesting to see how we're going to be able to weather these if we can't get uh, anything to stick to them well uh with that let's uh jump into the build Alright, we're just going to hit on some of the more interesting parts of the build and places where I had some trouble. This is part of the suspension, made of the same rubber as the tires. It gives a lot of play for the posing when the build is finished. I'm using BMS 5K Flexi Black on these parts. You can see the play all around on this. Moving on to the differentials, don't add any glue to these four parts, that's so, so they can move up and down freely when finished. Then add the first piece reassembled to the center of the differential, then glue the two halves of the differential together. And make sure it's all still workable before moving on. There's four differentials on this build in total. We'll go ahead and glue the first one in place. Then I'll trap one of the half shafts between the first and second diff and make sure it's glued into place.
Then a skid plate is glued into place over the half shaft. All four of the differentials are now in place with their half shafts, so need to add the transfer case into place next. The fuel tank is then added into place on the frame. It's sad that in the end, 90% of all this work will be hidden, but it is very detailed. Next, the leaf springs are added. The center slides into the hole, and each end fits into the recesses on the suspension arms. Now where I ran into a problem. The kit comes with two sets of sidewalls, and they both look identical. The bottom is what the kit tells you to use. You can line them up and everything is in the same place. But here is the problem. The wall they want you to use doesn't line up with the floor at all. See, it starts skinning uh, out of sync here. Now the other piece, you can see it lines up perfectly. Another thing is, the wall that they want you to use, it is completely covered in ejector pin marks, while the other wall, it's completely clean. You can see there is just a ton of ejector pin marks. And the other wall, it is completely clean. And plus, the molding on the other part they tell you not to use, the detail is way crisper on it. So the one they want you to use, yeah, I'm just going to toss it and use the other one that's in the kit. Both sets of wall sections have a lot of locator lines on them as well, and for this version, we won't use any of them, so I will just scrape and sand them off all smoothly. Now that the sidewalls have been chosen and cleaned up, it's time to attach them to the floor. Now I'm going to attach the floor wall combo to the frame. The steering column for the rear driver is threaded through the hole on the floor, and the pedals fit into the notches. I did have to ride in the notches for the pedals with a few swipes of the file just to make sure they go in easier. Didn't want to break them. Glue is added in a few places to lock the floor into place. armor section is added over the frame. Again, most of the framework that we've built, it won't be seen in the end. A cool little tool I wanted to show here by Alexan Models. It makes cleaning seams on rounded pieces just really easy. Just a few swipes, and it takes that mold seam right off. Adding some photo edge pieces to the smoke fence using VMS 5K Flexi Black. I 
I decided that I would have both bins in the open position. Now moving on to building the gun mount. I found it easier to add the pieces to the right side of the mount first, just to get everything lined up correctly. Then the left leg of this mount is added. The 7.5cm main gun went together easily with no problems. Make sure not to add any glue to these two location points, that way the gun can elevate up and down when it's complete. There was no positive location point on the floor for the gun mount, and the instructions are very unclear on this as well. Luckily the side of the box has some photos of the finished interior without the upper hull in place, and that is how I determined where to glue the gun mount. doors all fit in place very nicely. Each one does have a few ejector pin marks to fill and clean up though. Moving on to building the fenders, all four are similar and just have different things added to them on top. First I add is the box for the storage area. Then the lid for the top of the storage box is added in place. Then the side door. I decided to build one fender with the side door removed and it just acts as damage. Then the last piece to go on is the mud flap. Now each fender also gets boxes and tools added to them, but this is like the common pieces for each one. And the fenders are really easy just to line up and attach. Now here's all the sub assemblies laid out. The back section here lines up extremely well, probably the best fitting piece in the whole kit. It's the Ford section here of the upper hall that just doesn't want to fit right. I'm definitely going to end up with a gap somewhere. I hope to have it in the front, uh, compared to the back or the middle, since the uh, front and back sections also line up very nicely uh, by themselves.
the engine they only give you the bottom half luckily most of nothing will be seen of it and I plan to paint the engine compartment just black to hide any detail that's in there to begin with I plan on adding a sheet of styrene under the open engine grill and paint it black, again just to hide anything that's inside the engine compartment. And here is the main gun assembly. You can see it can still elevate up and down. And that metal barrel has some nice rifling on the inside of it. Again the main gun can elevate up and down and it can also move side to side. But once the main, uh, or the upper armor is in place, it's not going to be able to move uh, much left or right to begin with. Again, the two halves of the upper hull line up so well, that's why I don't want the gap to be in the middle. I think I can work with this gap in the front. I'll just have to play around with it a little bit more and see what I get. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I just recently passed the 800 subscriber mark, and I really appreciate to all you guys who come here and watch my videos. It means so much to me. Uh, in the next video, I'll be painting and weathering the interior of this. So, you know, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already to, so you can see that video when it first comes out. And I promise it won't take me as long to make that one as uh, it did to take, make this one. I think it's been like a month now since my last video. But I've had a lot going on. But I appreciate all you guys that, you know, still came and subscribed during that time. And just, you know, thank you all so much. And stay tuned for many more builds to come.